Yo, it's Two Side Anime here. Chapter 8 has officially dropped and we have a lot to talk about. Chapter 8 was the perfect way to end off Volume 2, Boruto, 2 Blue Vortex, manga. There's been a lot of mixed reviews when it comes to this chapter, mainly surrounding Hima's new power that was sensed by Jura. Even though Damon told us already that Himawari has a hidden power inside herself, kind of just like Gohan for Dragon Ball Z, people are still acting shocked. And I'm gonna be the first one to say it. Even though people are acting shocked and Hima's new power was hinted on in part one, I personally don't agree with it or like it if it deals with the Nine Tails. I won't mind if she just has hints of the chakra, but her have fully having the Nine Tails within her to contradict what Momoshiki said at the beginning of the series. If you're using the manga app, chapter seven, page 38, we see Momoshiki look at Naruto and say, is that your kid, Fox? I see. It seems like you're burdened with a rather interesting fate. We see Boruto with the question mark and Momoshiki continues and says, what a pity, Fox, that you possess so much power, yet not the jutsu to pass it down to the next generation. This happened right before Momoshiki consumed Kenshiki and evolved to fuse Momoshiki. What I took from this dialogue is when Momoshiki used his Byakugan to study both Naruto and Boruto's genetics, he saw that Naruto isn't able to pass down his enormous chakra pool to his children. But on the other side of this argument, you can say that Momoshiki didn't get the chance to look at Hima. So it's still up in the air. And I'm not calling this bad writing because later in the video, I'm explaining why it actually makes sense that Hima has the Biju chakra in her blood. So in today's video, we're going to go over Hima's new power, her fate in chapter nine, and why her new power makes so much sense. Jura's true identity, Boruto's ability to know the future, and how he was able to appear in front of Sarada when Code attacked, Kowaki's paranoia, and his first move down to the darkness, and Ida turned against Kowaki. So you know it's theory time, and you know I'm about to talk a bunch of nonsense that sounds good, but you know the motto, just let me cook. There's a lot to talk about Hima's new powers and the new revelation that we received from Jura. There's there's a few ways I want to go about this to explain Hima's power. First, I want you guys to remember that Hima having parts of the Biju Chakra was the original plan that Kishimoto had for Boruto. But this plan was scratched because of Kadachi and the novel that he helped create for the Boruto series. In this novel, Teneri awakened Boruto's hidden power, which led to the activation of the Jogon, the Star of Hope. Introduction of the Jogon scratched Kishimoto's original approach to Boruto's powers because Boruto was supposed to have two Byakugans and the Nine Tails cloak. In the original drawing of the new Team 7, Amiski with his Sage Mode, Sarada with her MS Sun Sharigan, and Boruto and the Nine Tails cloak with two Byakugan drawn by Kishimoto. A lot of people forgot about this image and thought it held no weight, but I feel like this image was created in the early stages of the Boruto series because Karma probably wasn't created yet and the Jogon wasn't a thing. But this image resurfaced at the Sarada awakened her MS Sharigan in front of Sasuke for the first time. Even though I want Hima to have something more unique. I can see them going down this path because she's already awakened both her Byakugan, which we saw in multiple anime canon episodes. And it was stated several times, just like Boruto, Hima was a genius when it came to ninjutsu. And if that's not enough to convince you, there's more proof. Boruto and Hima come from one of the most broken family trees in the Naruto slash Boruto franchise. Just take a look at your screen and look at this family tree. And a big shout out to sport guy. You can check out this family tree at his video called Utsuki Clan Family Tree in Naruto and Boruto and go ahead leave a like and comment for me. It's not that shocking to see Boruto and Hima having this innate ability to unlock hidden powers that we've never seen. And if that's not enough proof for you, I have one more piece of evidence for you today. In the Sakura novel, the antagonists of this novel were using the blood of Sasuke and Naruto to create chakra pills that gave them the abilities of the Sharingan and allowing them to turn into pseudo nine tails. The main takeaway from this is that they used the blood of Naruto to turn themselves into nine tails variants. Sakura had to face off against Kido, who turned into a full form Nine Tails. So it makes sense for Hima, Naruto's daughter, who has his blood, to have traces of the Nine Tails or the Tail Beast within her. 
With that being said, I may not agree with it 100%, but I see what they're trying to cook up with HEMA, and I'm all for it. I honestly just wanted her to have something more unique along the lines of how Boruto got to Jogon. I would love for her to have some type of star type ability. I think we're all jumping to conclusions because it wasn't really clarified if she has the Nine Tails power. Jura from the Ten Tails just sensed Bijou energy within her, which isn't that shocking. She's the daughter of Naruto, you know, the guy who has both halves of the Nine Tails. And before you guys try to run and say, but Lady Tsunade didn't have that, but we were never introduced to Lady Tsunade's parents to debunk this claim that the blood of the Jinchiriki can pass down to the children. But all honestly, it really makes sense. Everything in the Naruto franchise is about bloodlines and new scientific research shows that the father's genes are more dominant in their children than the mother's. Now that we're done with Hima's powers, and how it makes sense that she's gotten this hidden potential. Let's talk about her fate. I have to take a trip down memory lane. In chapter three, page 37, Boruto gave Kowaki a subtle threat. Well, I took it as a subtle threat. He said, your smack talk hasn't changed, but I'm glad to see Himawari is looking well. I took that as Boruto telling Kowaki, if anything would have happened to Himawari, it would have been on site at that very moment. Boruto would have forgot about his mission about the Ten Tails and Code and crashed out on at Kowaki at that very moment. But that's just me. We also saw how Boruto's facial expression softened up when he saw Hima in that same chapter. This conversation was important because it was foreshadowing Hima's fate facing the new threat Jura. Because of Jura's curiosity, curious nature, when he learns that the others believe Naruto Uzumaki is dead and Hima was the closest thing to Naruto. Jura is going to capture Hima and escape with her. Don't think Jura will harm Himawari. I think he's going to keep her around to continue to use her to gain more knowledge about the Shinobi world. Jura had the perfect opportunity to complete his goal and consume Kowaki after he knocked him out, but he chose not to because he's more curious in finding out the truth about this new life that he's living than follow his instincts to consume a Utsusuki, which makes perfect sense that he will capture Hima and use her as a way to learn more about this world. So chapter 9, Hima's getting captured. That moves us on to the next topic of this video and it's Jura's identity. We all know the mutation of the call grinds was because of Code's white karma. This was stated by Boruto in chapter 6, page 23, when he said he may not be an Utsusuki, but he got a karma from Ishiki, which is a lump of Utsusuki essence, so it having some effect wouldn't be a surprise. Everything we're seeing with the claw grimes is possible because of Ishiki Utsusuki, so it's quite obvious who Jura is. Jura is a clone of Ishiki's will. Before you guys start yelling, be like, that doesn't make sense because we've seen the claw grimes attack real people before becoming the clones. Just let me cook. There's some subtle hints that Jura is the clone of Ishiki. The first hint that Jura is a clone of Ishiki was the black box he was sitting on top of in chapter five, page 17. This is the same cube that Jigen slash Ishiki used against Naruto and Sasuke in their second fight. My next piece of evidence is gonna be the Jura side shots. Hey yo, not gonna lie, his side shots be going crazy. And the reason why they go crazy, Jura's side shots match the side shots of, of Kowaki and Ishiki. Before you say, what are you talking about, Two Side? I'm talking about the horn of Jura, Ishiki, and Kowaki all look the same from the side. Anytime Ishiki or Kowaki did anything fire in the past, Ikimoto always made sure to show the side shot of their horn. Here are a couple of examples. We can start off with chapter 48, page 29, when Ishiki dropped the pillars on Cash and Code. Chapter 66, page 4, Kowaki's horn being shoved. Again, chapter 66, page 12. Now with your memory being refreshed, I want you guys to go to chapter 5, page 17, and look at Jura from the side. He has the same exact horn. Jura is Ishiki. Again, I'm not sure if Jura is different from the other ones and it didn't take 
a call grime to attack a person to transform into this god tree clone this leads to another theory or suspicion i have for jura's identity i flat out believed it's ishiki but i also have this crazy theory who jura really is as code was staring at kowaki for the first time using v2 he said something that caught my attention is amado trying to make kowaki into a second ishiki I remember reading this for the first time and my ears perked up a little and here's why what if before jigen and amado decided to create a clone of ishiki using the dna from jigen but this clone slash cyborg was too powerful and just like damon and ida jigen said that this clone has to go into storage creating a clone using jigen's dna that was fully turned into Utsusuki would have been nothing for Amado. This is the same Amado that created a second karma similar to Ishiki's karma. And we all know karma is nothing but data of the Utsusuki. So Amado creating a clone would be easy by just using the karma. This is where this theory gets kind of crazy because we know Amado created several cyborgs above Jigen's level. What if Code asks Bug if there's any other cyborgs that can help him in his mission in destroying the leaf and Bug told him about this specific cyborg. Code goes there to locate the cyborg and once he releases the cyborg, he sees that it's a freak of nature of Ishiki slash Jigen. This angers Code because Code only worships one Ishiki. And so seeing a clone of him will just make him mad. Code attacks this cyborg using the claw grinds and this becomes the first tree that translated over to a god tree clone. But I really just feel like the clone is just Ishiki. Let's move on to the next thing that stood out to me in chapter eight. During their conversation, Shikamaru asks Boruto, how does he know so much about these details and everything that's taking place? And Boruto looks off to a distance. Boruto part one, we learned that Momoshiki and Boruto's mind became in sync. So Momoshiki's ability to see into the future is now Boruto's ability. Boruto saw all the events that are taking place. That's why in chapters one to four in Boruto 2 Blue Vortex, Boruto was such in a rush to stop code to stop the awakening of the god tree clones, but he was too late. Even Cash and Koji brought up to Boruto at the end of the chapter that they knew this would have been a possible outcome and now they have to fight. So he can't be reckless and risk his life like he did in the dimension where the Ten Tails was at. Now let's talk about how Boruto was able to appear right where Sarada was at when Code was trying to attack her and how he's just appearing everywhere. Answer to that question, Boruto is using the power of the Jogon to see everything that's taking place with his friends to constantly monitor them. If you remember in the New Way arc and also in the Boruto novel, Boruto was able to use the power of the Jogon to hear his friends and listen to their conversation and also appear to exactly where they were at. We need Boruto to open up that eye so we can see what he has. And finally, the most important part of chapter 8 which is also for Saddle since the beginning of the Boruto 2 Blue Vortex series, is that Kowaki is finally going to take his steps into the darkness because now he's finally realized that he's being betrayed and his paranoia will get the best of him. Let me explain. In chapter 4, Kowaki already believed that the Century Unit was helping Boruto. On page 24, he says there's also a chance that Boruto and Code are linked. Before he disappeared, Boruto seemed to be talking to someone. It better not be someone in the Century Unit. Now looking at the current events from Chapter 6 up to Chapter 7, we now see Shikamaru actively working with Boruto and communi communicating with him using Eno the head of the Century Unit. Even though Shikamaru was trying to be big brain with this situation, he slipped up and made a very vital mistake in Chapter 8. Kawaki is attempting to locate Boruto with the aid of Delta. Shikamaru slips up and tells Boruto that Kowaki is coming for you and Boruto uses his flying thunder god because you know he's not worried about Kowaki. That's the baby bro for real. Instantly, Kowaki realized that Boruto has left the area and there's no way that Boruto would have known he was coming or sent him unless somebody in the sensory unit told him that he was on his way. And that's why in that panel, you see Kowaki staring off into space and you see Shikamaru right next to him. Shikamaru is officially on Kowaki's hit list. And the person that Kowaki is going to use to get the truth is Ino. Rest in peace. And finally, 
the last part of this video is going to be Ida listening in on Miski's conversation with Borto and now realizing that maybe her love for Kowaki is more of like a codependence than real love and how she has to find herself and find her own identity. She only fell in love with Kowaki because he was Utsusuki and he won't fall under the false pretense of her love charm ability, which we later learned to be omnipotent. This puts Kowaki in the same situation Ko was in after he messed up and Ida, Damon, and Amado all left him alone. Kowaki is walking down the same path where everybody, the Leaf Village, the Hokage, and Ida all turned their back on Kowaki and the only person that's gonna be there to save him is Boruto. That's pretty much the end of this video. Chapter 7 to me is just a very special chapter and I don't think chapter 8 was able to top it. But I also had to take in consideration that chapter 8 is laying down the groundwork for everything that's going to take place in the future. So we needed a chapter with heavy dialogue. Chapter 9 is definitely going to be a banger. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment and I'm out.